Hey, what's up everybody? This is Pinario, so welcome back to Fortnite. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ragnarok, the new mythic outlander that came with update 5.2. Now I have to say, I've been playing around with him a lot for the past two weeks I believe, and he's a lot of fun. I definitely have to say he's my second favorite outlander. He comes with a new ability that we'll get into when we look at his skills, but I really think that he's an interesting take on a combat version of an outlander. So let's get into his skills. Now like I said, Ragnarok is a mythic and his archetype is the Dark Viking. So let's take a look at his skills. So he gets Shock Tower instead of Teddy, which really adds into his close quarters combat archetype. Now his new ability, he gets at level 2 and it's called Seismic Impact. He punches the ground causing it to rupture, knocking back medium sized enemies and dealing energy damage in a 2 tile line that conforms to the world. Now what that means is that it will go up slopes, it will go over rocks, it will even go through some buildings. It's actually pretty cool. Now you could think of it as shockwave, but it only goes in front of him in a line. So I definitely recommend lining your enemies up in front of you and sort of trying to funnel them. And you'll be able to wipe out a lot of them or at least knock them down. Now it does say that it will knock back medium sized enemies and that includes the husky hus and blasters but i've been able to stagger a smasher under the right circumstances so i definitely think it all depends on your tech skill which is really important for abilities he gets fault line where seismic impacts cooldown is lowered by six seconds he gets fault line where seismic impacts cooldown is lowered by six seconds he gets sustained impact where seismic impact stamina cost is reduced by 15. Now when you vote him for the second time, you get Anti-Material Charge, which is the one punch that allows us to break down buildings and trees and structures, and you also get the armor that we see on his body there. And now I'm not including the helmet, I'm just talking purely about the armor. He gets Long Arm of the Law, which increases the travel distance of Anti-Material Charge by 1.5 tiles. He gets Fists of the South Moon, which reduces the cooldown of Anti-Material Charge by 5 seconds. He gets Charge Fist, where Anti-Material Charge can be charged by holding down the activation key, dealing up to 150% additional damage. This is something that I typically use after I throw down Shock Tower and I see a group of enemies get stunned. I'll charge this up and then blast through them with that extra distance that Long Arm of the Law gives us. When you evolve him for a second time, you get In the Zone, where after 5 hits in a row with the pickaxe, you gain In the Zone, which increases pickaxe damage by 24%. Now the other thing you get when you evolve him for the second time, is you get the helmet that you see here. Now when you take him to 4 stars, which my guy doesn't have, he actually gets access to his cape. But I don't even use the helmet, so I'm, I'm wondering if I'll ever use the cape, but we'll see when I evolve him eventually. He gets Return to Cinder, which Seismic Impact will return to its original impact location. So when you first punch the ground, it will go out in that two tile line, then it will immediately come back to the original point of impact, which is really cool for doubling down on that damage, especially against a Smasher or a Blaster. And finally, at level 30, he gets Iron Knuckles, which increases the damage of Anti-Material Charge by an additional 150% against enemies. So I find that I use both Seismic Impact and Anti-Material Charge when I'm in combat, and I hope that you guys will be able to see that in the gameplay we're going to get into. And now his description reads, The Ground Quaking Harbinger of Fate. Now the squad I'm going to be using today is Fragment Flurry Jess, because her squad bonus is Energized, where it increases energy damage by 20%. Now the reason why I use her is because each of his abilities do energy damage. Shock Tower, Seismic Impact, and Anti-Material Charge all do energy damage, so they're going to be increased by an extra 20%. Now another choice you can use is Shuruka Master Sarah here, so that all his abilities get increased by 20% naturally. But the reason why I use Fragment Flurry Jess is because I'm also using the Helium Shotgun here, which does energy damage. So I get increased 20% damage from my weapon and I get a 20% increase for all his abilities. Now the second person I'm using here, I've been debating on what exactly to use, but I find that because he doesn't have any defensive capabilities or first survivor ability, I want to use this guy here at Thunderstrike Scorch, where his tactical squad bonus is Dragon Days, where whenever my shield breaks, it triggers an AoE blast that deals 800 base impact 
and stuns nearby enemies for one second. This allows me, hopefully, to get out of harm's way if I get caught by a uh, husky hus or something that breaks my shield. I'll be able to get that stun off and then get away so I can relocate. But other options that I do put here are Saruka Master Sierra because her squad bonus is pressure points where into material charge will slow enemy movement speed by 30% for 7 seconds. This is what I would typically use on a smasher to slow them down in the middle of their charge. Even though I do take some damage when they finally get to their resting point and they start walking back towards me, they'll be slowed down. Now another option I could use here is Shotgun or Grizzly, where every time I have a charge fragment and I place my shock tower, it will increase the duration by 2 seconds. So instead of lasting for only 3 seconds, it will last for 5 seconds. So the third hero that I typically used in this slot is Tank Penny, where her tactical squad bonus is Firewall, where melee attacks against the primary hero's shield triggers their energy pulse that deals energy damage and knocks back nearby enemies in a 0.5 tower radius but i've settled on using thunderstrike scorch and hopefully you guys will be able to see how effective it is when we get into gameplay so we're gonna hop into this level 82 rescue the survivor mission so we can play around with ragnarok okay we're in i hope i'm not too rusty at this game because i haven't played in a little bit i've been playing a lot of raiders of the broken planet and I hope I'm not too rusty. Alright, here we go. So that move right there is Seismic Impact. Hopefully you guys got to see that. But there's a lot of this uh, this smoke that stops range damage. So we'll see. I'm going to do it now again. There we go. It looks so cool. It's such a unique ability. Alright, guy. Nope, you're dead. Guess you can count on the drone for that. I don't think two of us need to handle that. So I'm going to go and find some other survivors. I'm pretty sure... Well, am I going to lag off the cliff? No, I'm not. Okay, good. I'm pretty sure that Pathfinder can handle that. Let's see if we can find some enemies to take care of. So the charging up of Antimaterial Charge looks like this. Oh, come on. Perfect time for lag. All right, hopefully I can show you that when people are not still coming in. There's a Storm Chest here. But I'm going to mark that so my team can know it's there all right so let's get back to the charge here we go and it goes much further than other charges and that's seismic impact there which usually knocks down these big guys on the way back i haven't had it knock down husky hus on the way forward as much as definitely on the way back all right you guys coming up here you are coming up here. Alright, let's get you guys in the line. Yep, follow me. Okay, here we go. Such a cool ability. I can't get enough of it. Every time I see it, I'm just amazed that it's actually in the game. Alright, let's grab this blue glow so I can help out this guy over here. Nope. I feel like I'm going to lag off the cliff. See, that's some of the issues that I've been having with the game since I haven't been playing recently. I pretty much stopped because of all the lag that I've been getting. Let's take out these guys. There we go. <laughs> okay, you guys are not worried about me. You're mostly worried about him. So I'm going to ignore you guys and go find some blue glow to help out this guy. It says there's blue glow below me. All right. You guys want this? Here we go. So good. Yeah, I definitely like using Fragment Flurry just in that slot. Storm chest. Okay, I guess they want to do the storm chest. We're going to go ahead and do that. The other guy says hey, he doesn't want to do it, so he's going to pass. Let's use Shock Tower. Get this group down. Oh, we got a Blaster here. I'm pretty sure the drone took him out. But I did hit him a little bit with the uh, Seismic Impact. I'm going to let the drones do their work. We're going to get to the next survivor. Because I'm not going to get much <laughs> hits in with all these drones. Actually, I might get it down here. There we go. This ability is perfect for going through those super shooters because weapons don't go through them, but Seismic Impact most definitely will. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Master Grenade Ramirez just destroys Storm Chest. There we go. Oh, this guy that I tried to save before is getting destroyed now. Well, actually, not really because he's invincible, but we can take out these guys. 
such a cool ability. All right, where is this blue glow? It says it's below me, but I'm not sure where the cave entrance is. Well, well, it's right here. The abilities come back so fast. Like, this seismic impact is only on a 9 second cooldown. So, if you're able to re relocate a lot, you can actually have your abilities up fairly quickly. But let's see what the cooldown on anti-material charge is. Only 7 seconds. So, if you alternate between these two abilities, you'll be able to have almost constant uptime of your combat abilities. Alright, you guys coming to me? No, you're not. Good. Alright, so that's one person saved. Alright, lady. This is perfect for Shock Tower. Looks like Shock Tower take out these guys, if it can. Guess not. Seismic impact it is. There we go. Kills the super shoulders, knocks down the husky husk, and then I can take them out with my helium shotgun. Lady, you're fine. Relax. Is this a glitch? Why can't I talk to her? Alright, I'm gonna go look around and see if there's any more enemies around because I can't talk to the lady. Maybe I can now. That was amazing. There we go. For some reason, I can talk to her now. That was weird. Now, I typically do these missions in a encampment's mission, but I wanted to hop into this because there's more opportunities for fighting enemies solo. Because usually in those encampment missions, I end up getting a Dragon Scorch, which destroys everything. But we got a Smasher here. Let's start off with Seismic Impact. Get him loosened up. Dash through him here. Alright, gotta take out these guys. There we go. Alright, Smasher. There we go. Get that going. Let's get a full charge on you. See, so pretty good. If you mix up your weapon shots with your anti-material charge, you can do fairly well against Smashers. But I think he really shines on these buses here. Because you have the straight line that is seismic impact. And you have shock tower that you can throw down, which can stun anything over there. And I can just blast through them with my anti-material charge. Alright, I got you. There we go. See? You're good. I'm not even going to use a drone. No, 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 no. You, you're annoying. Alright, get these guys down. Get you guys down. Smash you guys. Alright, can't let her get touched. Especially not by a blaster. Please. Thank you. See? You're all good. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we got another smasher here. Let's take him out. So this gun, this gun does good damage with that extra 20% that Fragment Flurry just gives us. You see right there, it usually stuns on the way back. Because going through the Smasher the first time, it didn't stun him. But on the way back, if you guys saw, he actually got staggered a bit. Alright, looks like I got enough blue glow. Let's go ahead and help this guy. And pick up another Shock Tower. Are there any more encampments around? We can go ahead and take those out because we're pretty much near the end of this Rescue the Survivors mission. Because you only have to rescue a bonus of 9. And are there any more on the map? There might be some in that dust in the middle. We'll go ahead and take care of that. Oh, we got another guy here. Yeah, he definitely excels on these cars as well, so he can take care of this guy. Shouldn't be too much of a hassle. If I can see anything. We're going to throw it on Shark Tower because Shark Tower doesn't necessarily need to see to do damage. This smoke is so annoying sometimes. But look at that. Seismic Impact back up already. And we'll be able to use anti-material charge once this next group comes in. Get these guys down. Psychic impact is back already. Yeah, I love the cooldowns of his abilities. Let's go ahead and punch this group. Psychic impact is back already. It's so good. I love it. Good job. There you go, sir. Now, another cool thing about its ability is that don't, not only can it go up mountains and stuff, it can actually go straight down. So if I stand here and I punch, you can see it goes right down and then comes right back up. That's what the conforms to terrain part of 
the skill description means. And so if there are blasters up on the cliff or something, I'm able to hit them. Just like I can hit that behus right through the wall. Alright, so I think that's all the survivors. So I'm going to go see if I can take out some of these encampments. Actually, there's one more, but one may have died. I'm not entirely sure. But let's go ahead and hit up some of these encampments. Alright, we got a medium encampment here. Now, with this guy, positioning matters a lot. So I'm going to try to get in a position where the husks have to funnel to me. Like right here. There we go. Let's throw shock tower in here for the stragglers. Alright, let's get you guys down. Yep, come on. Right through the wall. Fantastic. Punch you in the face. You're dead. There we go. What? In the tree? Really? Right there. That was Dragon Days and my shield breaking. And it's stunning that blaster who magically learned to climb trees somehow. Alright, let's see if we can find another encampment. I don't think there's any more on the map. Let's go take a look. Alright, so I haven't found any more encampments, but what there are, are these blue ghost siphons. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started. And now I don't know exactly how this is going to fare with just me defending it, but I'm going to build a crappy little defense over it. Just to ensure that it lasts a little bit longer. Okay, so here's my crappy defense. It's just four staircases and two walls. We're going to get this started. Now I'm going to throw my drone in this direction so I can only have to worry about one side. And we can go ahead and take these guys out. See, like I said, it really only staggers them on the way back I've seen. Okay, we're definitely going to need a shock tower for this group here. There we go. Perfect lineup for seismic impact. Did they get through on this side? Yep, they took down my crappy defenses on that side. I can't even see what's through the fog there. Oh, it's a super fast ice hus. Water hus, I should say. Let's knock you down. There we go. And the thing that's really cool is that it doesn't set off propanes when it goes through them. I hear a smasher. Well, good thing you can't really do anything to my thing. I'll let you have your fun there. See if I can hit you through the wall. I can. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. So that was my first little crappy defense. Let's start for the next one while we have some more time left. Might as well build another crappy wall here. All right. Let's get this started. All right. We're going to throw my drone right up here and I will focus on this side. Oh, no. We have lobbers. Let's take out the lobbers if I can. Alright, Lobbers, you're down. You're down. Alright, perfect group. There we go. Now, that may have looked like I missed, but that was strategy. <laughs> Definitely didn't miss my shot there. Okay. Actually, I could take you out with the Walloper. I wasn't really planning on using the Walloper in this video, but might as well. Alright, Hussy Huss. Stop what you're doing. Cease and desist, please. Okay, that's down. Let's punch you in the face. Yep, that one I can definitely say that I missed. Let's see, what else do we have here? Did it blow up? It did blow up. Well, <laughs> there you go. Alright, so that was Ragnarok. Since I got him, he's been the only hero that I've been using. I've been having so much fun with him. Like I said, I definitely think that positioning with him is everything. A lot of people on the right are saying that he's not as great, but I really think it's the way that you play with him. And it also depends on your fort stats. Definitely focus on tech if you want to use him as your quote unquote main hero, because that ability damage and ability strength will be everything when you're playing with him. You definitely have to learn how to block off an area and funnel husk so that your abilities can do the most damage and be as devastating as possible. But anyways, that's going to bring us to the end of this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. 
And also, do me a favor and click the notification bell so you can be notified when I post. Let me know how you guys feel about Ragnarok in the comments. If you didn't like it, however, leave a comment. Let me know why. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Later.